Welcome to CSE Guru. In this session, we will discuss the next problem under greedy techniques, Huffman 3 and Huffman codes. Generally, when we want to send any sensitive information, the, the sender will encode the message before sending and the receiver will decode the message before reading. But here, they have to ensure about the encoding technique. There are many different encoding techniques available. One among the important encoding techniques under greedy method is Huffman 3 and Huffman codes. So here, what I mean with code word in the sense, encoding a text with the N symbol alphabet by assigning to each other of the text symbols some sequence of bits. Suppose if you want to send any message like data in the sense, this data directly the sender won't send to the receiver. Instead of sending the data as it is, this text will be converted into some sequence of bits. For example, maybe data it is 0, 1 or 1 it is 1, 1, T it is maybe 1, 0, again A it is 1, 1. Likewise, each text will be converted into some sequence of bits and this sequence of bits only the sender will send to the receiver. And the receiver will decode this sequence of bits in order to read this message data. So this sequence of bit is nothing but code word. For example, we can use fixed length encoding that is assigning each symbol a bit string of same length. For example, if you are, here if you are considering for data it is 0, 1, A it is 1, 1. Likewise, for each text we have assigned a 2 bit code like standard ASCII code. So, if you are assigning for each text same bit of length in the sense that is called fixed length encoding. One way of getting a coding scheme that, that is assigning a shorter code word for frequent symbols, more frequent symbols and a longer code word for less frequent symbols. Whichever the symbol or text you are using more frequently in your messages or information in the sense, for those texts you have to encode with shorter code words and longer code words for less frequent symbols. Rarely we will use some letters. For those letters we will use longer code words. This is an older idea actually. So, this is called shorter bit string. Particularly, this idea is used in telegraphy code invented in the middle 19th century by Samuel Morse. So, in that code, the frequent letters are E, A, they will consider it. For E, the code word is dot and A code word is dot and dash together. This A, E and A are more frequent letters and infrequent letters are less frequent letters we are considering in the sense that is Q and Z. Q double dash dot dash and for is a double dash double dot for longer ones in case of using infrequent letters and if you are considering the variable length encoding in the sense for each text the number of bits to encode that differs that is assigning code words of different lengths to different symbols that is called variable length encoding but what is the problem in variable length encoding in the sense it is difficult to identify how many bits are encoded in a text for example, the data itself if you are considering in the sense for if I am using 1 and for A if I am using 0 and for T if I am using 1 1 in the sense. See, here there are 5 bits. So, it is difficult to identify how many bits are encoded in a text. This problem will raise in variable length encoding. So, to avoid this complication, we have to limit ourselves to use so called prefix free codes. That is, no code word is a prefix of a code word of another symbol. You have to assign a unique code word for each symbol. So, no code word should be used as a prefix of code word for another symbol. That is called prefix code. So, here in this case of encoding, we can simply scan a bit string until we will get a first group of bit. That is a code word for some symbol and replace these bits by the particular symbol. Okay, And if you are repeating this process in the sense, you will get the encoded data. To create a binary prefix code for some alphabet in the sense, we can use like the symbols with the leaves of the binary tree in which all the left edges are labeled by 0 and all the right edges are labeled by 1. For example, if you are considering a tree with the left child and right child in the sense, the left edge will be labeled by 0 code word and the right edge will be labeled by 1. Okay, here also, if this is left, this is right in the sense, here left edge will be labeled by 0, right edge will be labeled by 1. In all other cases, we have to use like that only. So, this is nothing but a binary prefix code. So, here the code word of a symbol can then be obtained by recording the labels on the same path from root to the symbol's leaf. 
So here if you are considering this is the path if you are considering in the sense from root to the leaf if you are considering in the sense so code word will differ same code word you won't get it. So this left trees and all you have to mark it as 0 right trees and all you have to mark it as 1 okay. So here in this path if you are considering for example if it is D in the sense in this path if you are considering this is 0 1 1 this is a code word for D and this path if you are considering in the sense 0 0 for example A here in the sense code word for A is 0 0 and here it is the M in the sense code word for M is 1 1 and the code word for S is 1 0 likewise here for every symbol or every text you will get a unique code word. So here this will implement prefix free codes okay. So since there is no path to leaf that continues to another leaf no code word can be a prefix of another code word okay such a tree will use the prefix code word. So in this case if you are considering in the sense we can be able to assign shorter bit strings to high frequency symbols and longer ones to low frequency symbol that is perfect and this is what we are going to implement in Huffman tree and Huffman codes. So first we will check out this Huffman algorithm for example consider this as a problem so they have given letter and frequency of particular symbol this is 0.5 this is 0.2 and C is 0.25 okay so this is a problem they have given. So step 1 what we have to do it in the sense initialize n one node trees and label them with the symbols of the alphabet. So this tree you have to initialize like a n one node tree and record the frequency of each symbol in its trees root to indicate the trees weight okay and the frequency should be represented in the trees root okay. So for example here if you are considering I am creating a one node tree for a its frequency is 0.5 and letter is a that is the symbol. And B if you are considering it is 0.2 letter is B and C it is 0.25 okay. So I have created like a N node tree in the given problem we have to take it like the letter along with its frequency we have to construct it like a N one node tree okay. And the frequencies of each symbol we have recorded in the root okay. First step is arrange the node with weights in ascending order that is in the frequency you have to consider here sorry here is 0.25 and here you have to record C okay. So here arrange the nodes with weight in ascending order. So you have to arrange it in ascending order that is B comes first ascending order 0.2 it is B okay and C comes next it is 0.25 C and then A comes next it is 0.5 A right. So now I have arranged in ascending order this is step 1. Step 2 if you are considering in the sense repeat the following operation until a single tree is obtained. That is find two trees with the smallest weight make them as a left and right subtree record the sum of the weights in the root and that will be created like a new tree. For example this two will be considered as a smallest weight that is B and C. So make them as a left and right subtree. B should be the left subtree and C should be the right subtree. Both the sum should be added that is the weight should be added and that will be represented in the root of a new tree. For example 0.2 plus 0.25 it is 0.45 okay and B will be recorded as a left subtree that is 0.2 B and C will be recorded as a right subtree that is 0.25 C okay and then this 0.5 A will be there right. So now this is the next step the step 2 we have to continue till we are getting a single tree okay that is repeat the following operation until you will get a single tree. Again you have to add these two okay and this will be the left and right subtree here both should be added and the sum will be at the top okay you will get it. So 0.95 you will get it right. So now we will get a single tree. So this is nothing but the Huffman tree. And here with this tree if you are considering in the sense the left subtree should be recorded by 0 and right subtree should be recorded by 1 okay. In all cases left subtree by 0 right subtree by 1 likewise we have to record it. For the single tree what you have created at the last that is called Huffman tree that is the tree constructed by the above algorithm is called Huffman tree and the codes what we are using here that is nothing but the Huffman code okay. So this is all about Huffman algorithm. So in this session we have discussed about the introduction to Huffman tree and Huffman code and we have also discussed Huffman algorithm. So in the next session we will discuss how to implement this Huffman's algorithm to solve the problem okay. Thank you for watching this video.